What's going on guys? It's Gendo here and welcome to episode 3 of my Football Manager 16 beta save with Everton. And today we have two big matches coming up for you. At first we're taking on Arsenal at home and then we're going to be traveling to Anfield to take on Liverpool in the Merseyside Derby. But before we get to those two matches, we must go over how we've been faring in the league as well as the Capital One Cup competitions. Looking at the league table right now, Everton are sitting in 7th place. 17 points through 11 matches, 5 wins, 2 draws, and 4 losses. And after that horrifying loss to Newcastle in the last episode, we did hit a little bit of a rebound, but also at the same time hit a big, big rough patch as we lost, or didn't win, in 4 straight matches. But let's kick off right from the top with West Brom. Following the 4-1 drubbing that at the hands of Newcastle, we took on West Bromwich Albion at home and gave them a similar 4-1 scoreline, this time with Everton as the victors. Morales with a brace, Lukaku with a penalty goal, and De La Feu adding a cherry on top in the 50th minute. West Brom were able to get a goal on the other side of halftime, but that was the only real attacking chance they had all game. They had only three shots on target, though comparatively we only had four and we took more shots, so... Finishing needs to get a lot better. And yes, we did score four goals in this. Four goals off of four shots on target. That's rather efficient, but I'd rather keep the shots to shots on target ratio a little bit closer together. But three points is three points, and then we go into the next match. And that next match was against Queens Park Rangers, where we defeated them very unconvincingly 1 0 in the Capital One Cup competition. Lukaku blasting home a penalty kick in the sixth minute but that was really all the offense we could muster eight shots three of them on target and none of that came in the second half as once Mohamed Besic got sent off with his second yellow card there just was not any offense on our side to speak of nothing was being played through the middle of the park and to be quite honest with you Queens Park Queens Park Rangers had so many more opportunities in that second half that's where most of their shots came um, they did have a lot more possession than us in the second half, thanks to that bes that Besage sending off. And we were quite fortunate to come away with a 1-0 victory at that point in time. I thought for sure that Queens Park could have equalized, could have sent it out to extra time, maybe even penalties. But like I said, we were very fortunate to come away with a victory, and we moved on to the fourth round where we drew against Manchester United. The results on that in a little bit. Stacking wins is what you'd always like to do, and in the very next match versus Leicester City in the league, we defeated them 2-0 away from home. Leighton Baines making his return from injury in his debut for the season, getting a goal in the 7th minute, and Gerard De La Feu adding on to that in the 24th. 15 shots, 7 of them on target, a little less possession than I would have liked, but with this 4-2-3-1 formation that I've always had, especially back in FM15, the way I set it up, it's more of a throw a long ball forward, put it in net, put it on net, and hopefully one of the attacking players will get to it. So possession, not that much of a factor for me. All that matters was the goals. And two goals to nil gets you a win, all three points. It's simple math, really. And when you win, you feel good. But that feeling of happiness and elation just left the building as we lost 1-0 to Swansea at home, which started our four-game winless streak. Ashley Williams being the only goal scorer for Swansea City in the 10th minute, and to be quite honest with you, they deserve the win. 11 shots, 6 of them on target. We only had 8-1, and one, and that was even before James McCarthy was sent off for a second yellow card. Once he left, pretty much everything being played through the middle of the park just stalled and we were not able to get any more attacking chances. Things went from bad to worse as then we traveled to Stamford Bridge and got absolutely destroyed versus Chelsea, losing 5-1. to one. Falcao, Oscar, William, John Terry, and Pedro, all the goal scorers for Chelsea. Meanwhile, our lonely goal scorer was Steven Paynar, the not often used Steven Paynar. But in the 61st minute, he was able to get his first goal of the season, it was definitely not enough as everyone played really, really poorly. Joel Robles being the only, well, one of only two players above a seven. And that was because, not just because Chelsea had 30 shots, 19 of them on target, Joel Robles made 15 saves. And that's the reason why he has 7.4. To be quite honest with you, he had a very, very rough time in Mets and the defense didn't help as Stones, Jagielka, Funes Mori, and Baines 
all averaged no greater than a 6.4, Baines being the worst defender out of them all. It was not a very fun time at Chelsea, and I just hoped, hoped and prayed that we could only just move on from here and pick it up in the next match. However, in a match that we were predicted to win and win handily, we only came away with a nil-nil draw versus Southampton, and once again it was marred by another Everton red card, Muhammad Besic picking up two bookings, in fact two bookings within two minutes, seeing himself sent off, and Everton had to play with ten men for the next hour, and once again, since Besic is a, a center mid player and everything with my formation develops through the middle, you couldn't do anything. Once he was taken off, just like with McCarthy being taken off, just like with, uh, was it Russ Barkley? No, just like with Coleman being taken off in uh, the Newcastle game. Every player is vital to this formation, and once they get taken off, it just throws the whole thing out of whack. And we couldn't build anything up. Eight shots, only three of them on target. Yes, it was more than what Southampton had combined but the, the finishing just wasn't there. And yes, we did get a point out of this, but I felt that if we had all 11 men, we could have came away with all three points. So this was extremely disheartening. Even though it wasn't a loss, it still should have been three points in the bag. And then our fourth straight winless match was against Manchester United in the Capital One Cup as we lost to them at home 2 0. Juan Mata and Bastian Schweinsteiger, the goal scorers for Manchester United, as they were able to get 11 shots off with four of them on target, whereas we had eight and three. But the very telling stat is definitely possession. They had 60%. And they just took down anything that we were throwing through the middle. They were cutting out passes. They were making well timed tackles. Just everything that you would expect Manchester United to do, they did and controlled the match from the get go. Well, yes, I can throw my hands in the air and say, yeah, it was the Capital One Cup. It's not really a big cup. It was still a trophy that we had. were in the contention for winning. And now that that's taken away, might as well take our focus. Might as well put our focus on the league as well as the FA Cup. But in the virtual return leg, as it were, in the league, we were able to go to Old Trafford and take away all three points, winning 2-0 at their place. Lukaku and Barkley with second half goals to help seal the deal. We only had nine shots with five of them on target. Once again, Manchester United bossed the game. 26 shots, it's only six of them on target for them, and 61% possession. Now, to be quite honest with you, I wasn't using my normal 4-2-3-1 here. I was using a V, the 4-5-1 in a V formation, to try and cut down everything that was being played through the middle, is what uh, Manchester United did in the first game. And having that extra defensive mid helped out a ton as not every single shot was outside of the 18-yard area. And when you limit them to long shots, more often than not, they're not going to score goals. And you did have Juan Mata, you did have Anthony Martial and Wayne Rooney all try for wonder goals, but all of them sailed over the crossbar. So we were very fortunate to come away with all three points here and a very, very legendary victory versus Manchester United. Okay, and that's all the matches up to this point. Let's turn our attention towards the two biggies. Arsenal coming up first. Right, so here's the team sheet we're going to be facing off with against Arsenal. Arsenal also coming out with a 4-2-3-1. Might as well stick with what we know best and try and hit them hard and fast and hopefully get a little lucky. So the 11 for today will be Tim Howard in net. Baines, Funes Mori, Jagielka, and Stones along the back line. Besic and McCarthy sitting in the center of the park. Three tacking mids will be Dilafeu, Barkley, and Aaron Lennon, who has not been uh, used very much all season. Might as well give him a run out here. And the big man Lukaku sitting up front in the striker role. Now, as I said, we got to strike fast and hope we get lucky. If we get a draw here, that would be amazing. A win, absolutely ecstatic. But let's kick off and see what happens. Two minutes in, and we get ourselves a throw-in on the right side, getting into Jags. Throws it forward, but it's headed away. Besic, out to Delefeu, who does cut inside, has options in the middle. Finds Lukaku, who bounces it off the near post, but he's offside anyway. Corner kick from Baines on the left side, getting it in. Finds Aaron Lennon. Aaron Lennon, from about the penalty spot, gets his first goal over the season and puts Everton up 1-0 
just before the 11th minute. Let's take a look at this corner in Baines. It actually falls to Barkley's head and lands to Lennon, who is unmarked. And what a great shot past Petr Cech. Throw in from Baines now, but it goes right to Theo Walcott. And now uh, Arsenal could hit us on the break. They're really good. They're really fast. Hector Bellerin lays it in to Giroud, and Giroud knots it up at one apiece. Just two minutes later, actually three minutes later, and it is all tied up at one goal apiece. That pace of Bellerin just absolutely confounding the defense. Stones missing the tackle on Giroud, and Giroud able to tie it up with a great shot past Howard. Throwing for Arsenal in the 24th minute. Good Right falls to Ramsey. Howard with a save. It bounces off the post. And good clearance away. Couldn't we hit him on the counter now? Barkley ahead to Lukaku. Ball goes in. Dilafeo out on the left. Does have Lukaku on the inside. He could pass it off. He could actually shoot, but the ball goes over the crossbar. And we come to halftime all tied up still at one goal apiece. Lukaku has definitely not had the best of times out there. Defensively, need to close down on those three or four attacking players of Arsenal as Giroud is just running us ragged. Okay, Lukaku has picked up a knock and uh, said that I should probably sub him out, which is what I will do. Leandro Rodriguez, who just came in over the summer and who was uh, stuck in the youth squad, is going to be coming in for him as uh, I would have put Bonazzoli in the spot, but Bonazzoli is also out injured. So Leandro Rodriguez, the young Uruguayan, hopefully he can be a difference maker. Dilafeu coming up the left now. Does have options in the box. Does whip it in. He gets it right back. Takes the shot, and what a save by Czech. Corner whipped in from Baines. Goes near post, but it's headed away. We do get the ball back, though. Barkley out to Baines. All right, with about 14 minutes left to go, there are a lot of tired players out there, so I'm going to have to start making some subs. As much as I don't want to, Stoney is looking the weakest out there in the defensive side, so we're going to bring on youngster Mason Holgate to fill in his spot. And then either James McCarthy or Ross Barkley is going to have to come out. Uh, either way, Tom Cleverly is going to make way, and actually we're going to bring out James McCarthy for that one. So Mason Holgate and Tom Cleverly coming on for the last 14 minutes. Hopefully we can get a little bit of, uh, with these fresh legs, at least put a little bit more pressure on Arsenal. Goal kick from Howard. Actually, just a free kick from Howard back there. 30 seconds left to go in stoppage time. Can we get one more attack? Can we get one more chance at a goal? Leandro Rodriguez does have it. He lays it off to Lennon. Lennon way out there. Whips it in. Can't find an Evertonian head. And with 10 seconds to go, Arsenal just playing it out on the wing. Gibbs to Cazola. To Ramsey to Giroud playing through the middle. Just 5 seconds now. This could be the last attack. But the ref blows his whistle and we end in a one-all draw here at Goodison Park. Like I said before, a draw against a team like Arsenal who are sitting in 3rd place is a solid, solid result. Yes, they were unlucky, but at the same time, it's a very, very solid result. So for now, we jump into 8th place leapfrogging over Tottenham based on goal difference. But now we must turn our attention towards the Derby. So next time, when we come back, in a couple of seconds, Everton, Liverpool, Merseyside Derby. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, and here we go. It's time for the Derby. Liverpool versus Everton here at Anfield. And Liverpool are going to be coming out in a 4-2-3-1 formation. We're going to match that, of course, as we have all season for most of the season, actually. And the lineup is going to be as follows. Tim Howard is going to be in net. Seamus Coleman coming back off of injury with Jagielka, Stones, and Baines, the rest of the back line. McCarthy and Lee Osman is going to get to start today here at the center of the park. The three guys up front in the attacking mid roles will be DeLefeo, Barkley, and Morales. And, of course, the stalwart up top, Romelu Lukaku. These are the matches that everyone says you're supposed to win and hopefully, with the lineup that we have and the form that we're trying to get back into, hopefully, we can get ourselves a win. So let's kick off and see what happens. Four minutes in, we get ourselves our first highlights. A free kick to us. Baines to De La Feu. Barkley cutting it through the middle. Finds Morales. Morales there to Lukaku. How did Mignole make that save? It looked like Lukaku was right there to get the goal. Fingertip save from Mignole. 
Could have easily been 1-0 to Everton right there. 17 minutes now, and here we come again. De La Feo just running inside, running, cuts it in, gets it to Barkley. Another save from Mignolet, another good save from Mignolet. This guy is playing out of his mind. World-class football there in the net right now. But now it's Liverpool coming in, and Luan, Luan, a good save from Howard. James Milner, though, gets a rebound, and James Milner makes it 1-0 to Liverpool off of a counter, a good counterattack. After those two saves on the other end from Mignolet, Howard tried to replicate that, but could not keep the ball out of the net. You know, Luan holding a play, good save from Howard, but then Stones could not reach that, and Howard obviously couldn't reach that to keep it out of the net. Highlight directly from the kickoff. This could be bad for us. Liverpool content to just passing it around the midfield. Coutinho into Firmino, who passes it through to Henderson, Jordan Henderson, but he was offside. 27 minutes gone, and that was a really bad throw in from Leighton Baines. Can he get that ball back? He does not. Firmino is taking it inside. Getting some good moves around everyone. Seamus Coleman with the clearance. Liverpool was still with the ball, though. Coutinho inside to Luan, and Luan goes far post. And it's 2-0 to Liverpool. Not even 30 minutes gone by, and we are just in shambles right now defensively. We cannot stop Coutinho or Firmino right now. And then Luan, what is even that? Howard, really bad save. A few minutes later, gone by, we do have the ball, and we are coming forward with it. Morales up the right wing. Has options in the box. Just cross it in, man. Gives it to Lee Osman. Lee Osman goes far post. And Lee Osman getting his first goal of the season. Getting us back to within one. It's now Liverpool 2, Everton 1 after 33 minutes. Now some decent passing to set up. Morales just taking it all the way to the byline. Then laying it back off to Osman. Osman just threading the needle just to get that goal. This is a throw in. It's a throw in for us. Just another minute later, McCarthy has it taken off of him rather easily. Coutinho now just running with it. Luan running with it as well. Defensively, what is going on? James Milner, good save from Howard. Another good save after a shot from Henderson conceding the corner. Some great end to end play from both teams right here. Not afraid to go the full length of the pitch with the ball. Liverpool are definitely the better passing team right now. Milner into Henderson, who I thought was offside, but he's not. Coutinho, Milner, and that shot goes wide. Corner now for Liverpool, just a couple minutes later. Cleared away, but they still have the ball. Milner, once again, inside. Coutinho on the edge of the box. Being mugged off. Still coming forward. In to Luan, and Luan, who is clearly onside, makes it 3-1 to Liverpool. Some great deceptive play, some good passing back and forth between Nathaniel Klein and Coutinho to find the open Luan. There were three Everton players behind him. That does you no good. That does you no good whatsoever. So 3-1 down at the break. And there really isn't much else I can do except yell at these guys, because especially on the defensive side, they have not played very well at all. This second half has not been good for anyone defensively. Seamus Coleman, Leighton Baines still not having the best of days. Jags with a yellow card. He's going to start making some subs out now. Stoney is going to move out to the right. And Seamus Coleman is going to be replaced by Funes Mori. And then in the middle of the park, you have Lee Osman, who's tired and only ha he has the goal. But he's tired and hasn't really done much. Neither is James McCarthy be quite honest with you. So I'm going to be subbing on Tim Sparve for James McCarthy here. And he's better as a center mid. And those are going to be my two subs. Keep the last one in my pocket for now. 66 minutes gone and Liverpool are coming forward once again. Jordan Henderson to Luan just running through that defensive line. And Jags already on a yellow card is going to see himself a second yellow card Right now, Everton are leading the league in red cards. I believe that is our fourth red card this season in the league, and that is absolutely unacceptable. We don't really play all that great of uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? We don't play a, that much of an aggressive style defensively. The aggression is more on the offense. So when I see something go happen like this, where someone is being sent off thanks to a defensive blunder, it's not good. Sparv can play center back, so he's going to be moving back there. Um and then move Barkley down, and that's uh, that's all we're going to make. So we got to play the next 23 minutes with 10 men. Good clearance away, but Lukaku can't pick that up. And as soon as we get a red card, all of our offense just goes down the tubes. There's not going to be another goal for us. Maybe. A long ball to Lukaku, but it's cleared away by Skirtle. Uh, but as soon as we go down to 10 men, just anything built up through the middle is absolutely gone. Jordan Henderson with the ball. A good save from Howard there. Could have easily been a fourth goal for Liverpool. One final sub, and it's going to be Brian Oviedo coming on for Leighton Baines. Defensively, everyone's been pretty bad. Leighton Baines, the worst defender of them all. So might as well sub him out just to give Brian Oviedo at least a little bit of fitness. Ten minutes left to go in this match, and a throw-in to Liverpool. Moreno coming through, gives in to Firmino, uh, finds Luan, and that's Luan's hat trick. It's 4-1 to Liverpool, and just could not be stopped. Once again, another game marred by a red card during a live com. Another game that will end in a 4-1 scoreline. Hopefully, will only end in a 4-1 scoreline. Here they come again. Not again. Henderson. Decent shot, good clearance away. Mignolet, oh, Delefeu can take a shot from about 45 yards out, but that's well wide. He was never making that, ever. And with one minute of stoppage time pretty much come and gone on the clock, it is going to be a rather disappointing set of results here as we lose 4-1 at Anfield. Everybody's cheering there in red. And everyone in blue just sitting in disappointment. And no one is more disappointed than me that Jags had to go off. And he was, he is the worst defender out of all of them. I'm sorry you, you looked to switch off, but Jesus, man, you, you got sent off. There's no reason to do that. And you probably should have gotten rid of him. Looking back on it... Just because I don't like seeing players with yellow cards late in the matches because more often than not, they'll get a red card. And it's been very apparent as of this season. As I said before, this is the fourth red card we've had in the league, and I believe we lead the league in red cards. So that result drops us down into 10th place, dead center, but it is still early on. That was only our 13th match in the league. We still have 25 to go. So we have plenty of time to turn around, but results like this, these big blowouts and seeing red names are things I want to cut down on. I don't want to lose 4-1. I don't want to lose 5-1. I don't want to lose, period. But I'll deal with all that after this. Let's take a look at the schedule and what is coming up. We have Sunderland... Aston Villa, West Ham, Bournemouth, Stoke, Watford. Actually, Stoke in almost back-to-back -back matches. Uh, we might as well come back right around the, the beginning of the new year. So it'll be Stoke and Watford. We'll do that. And then maybe in the coming episodes, we'll be right in the middle of January, during that January transfer window, and see who we can replace. But when we come back, hopefully we'll have much better time versus Stoke and Watford, two teams near the bottom of the table. Hopefully we can pick up some wins. So that'll be in the next episode when we come back. So until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and you want to stick around for more FM16 content. Comments, suggestions, questions, anything else, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.